Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Sunday, October 27th. I'm your host, Tom Orr. The Penn State game in six days, the game against Michigan in 34 days. Ohio State will enter that Penn State game with still just the one loss on its resume, but that was in doubt a little longer than you might have expected on Saturday. Buckeyes hang on to win 21-17 to over the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Joined by Kevin Noon of BuckeyeHuddle.com. And Kevin, that was a game that I think a lot of people were picking Ohio State to win by 25. They were favored by 25, and people were picking to win by more. And you got to look, Nebraska lost by 50, 56 to 7 in, in Indiana last week. That was a game that was extremely in doubt right up until the moment that Jordan Hancock made that game sailing interception. Absolutely. It was a game where people going in are like, well, what is the reaction going to be if Ohio State doesn't beat Nebraska by as much as Indiana? We kind of, we kind of got like a total left hook on that with uh, Ohio State just really coming out and looking flat. And it wasn't a case of Nebraska coming out and just whooping on them. But, you know, I think Ohio State committed a lot of its own sins in this game, and uh, it really came down to the end. I mean, it got eerily quiet at, at some points when, when Ohio State was, was trailing late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was... It was one of the quietest games I can remember being at that was not the third quarter of Akron, you know, where it's functionally a spring game in the second half. And then it also got real loud at the end. I mean, that was the, the crowd. All it took to get the crowd into the game was some calls the crowd definitely did not agree with, and Ryan Day definitely did not agree with. Towards the end of the game, there was a targeting call. There was a fumble, no fumble call on the field. It got real loud at the end. Buckeyes do pull it out, and I think we do need to give the defense a little bit of credit because there's been a lot of talk about how the defense can't get off the field in the second half, and they never force turnovers, and they never force punts in the second half in these close games. The third, the after uh, starting with a drive where Nebraska got the ball starting on the Ohio State seven yard line following an interception. So 7-11 left in the third quarter. Nebraska starts their drive seven yards from the end zone. Ohio State holds them on downs at the one-yard line. Next drive, four plays, three yards, punt. That was another one that started in Ohio State territory, and Ohio State forces a punt. They give up a touchdown at the beginning of the fourth quarter, nine plays, 74 yards, and then once Ohio State answers for a touchdown to retake the lead, 21-17, two more drives. One was three plays for negative two yards and a punt, and then four plays for 13 yards, ending with that Jordan Hancock interception. It was a different defense. The Buckeyes got a little more exotic, a little more diverse in what they did in terms of pass rush and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't perfect. There were certainly plenty of things that you could nitpick there, but I think it was a tangible improvement from the defense. Yeah, we saw more rotation, at, I, I feel, at, at various positions. We got to see more Jermaine Matthews. I mean, obviously, they did not have Lathan Ransom to start this game for the game. He is, uh, was out week-to-week -week type of situation. I guess we'll see when we see with him, but... Uh, you know, they, they were able to kind of do some different things. Uh, you know, there were times that they would uh, be three down and send six. I mean, and they had some successes. They had a lot of tackles for loss in this game. Uh, you know, going against a, a true freshman quarterback in Dylan Riola, uh, everything happens for a reason. And I think that this was a good opportunity for the defense to kind of pull the offense's butt out of the fire because the offense, just not really a lot of redeeming things I can say there. I mean, I'm sure we're going to talk offense in a second, and I can say a couple nice things. <laughs> I mean, hell, I've, 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 been around, I've been around Tony. I've, I've always tried to tell him <laughs> nice things. But, uh, you know, I think it was just an odd game full moon type of game or whatever and everybody now's heads are falling off over Penn State but mm -hmm. you know let's let's take a second rewatch the tape there's going to be probably a couple things that weren't as bad as you felt that they were mm -hmm. and there're probably going to be a couple things that were probably worse so yeah. you know we'll to be continued to be continued indeed one thing that i think is a legitimate concern right now even before going back and rewatching the game is the left tackle position for Ohio State cuz during the Oregon game they lost Josh Simmons for the year during the Nebraska game, they lost his replacement, Zen Mahalski. We don't have a timetable on it, but he, much like Josh Simmons, rode off on the cart at the end of the game. It took him a long time to walk off the field, went over the injury tent, and then they sent him up in the cart. It did not look like a, uh, you know, he was imminent to go back into the game by any means. And, and if that's a thing where he's not back next week, 
there's a lot of different possible solutions for them there. They put Donovan Jackson in at left tackle and Luke Montgomery in at left guard. I, I, he didn't play. He was not great, certainly, based on the feedback that I saw. That feels like I don't know if they know what the solution is there, and I don't know how confident they can be in whatever solution they go with. Yeah. Um, it's a question of do you go uh, Luke Montgomery? Do you go Austin Saravel? Do you we, Carson Hinsman? He's somebody that we haven't really heard much about recently, but he was kind of cross training center and, and, and guard. I mean, you could, let, hey, let's get nuts and let's just move, uh, you know, let's move Seth McLaughlin to guard and, and move, you know, put another center in there. I mean, I don't know if I would necessarily want yeah. to do that. I think that I would also, vote for not that. Not but. that, but you, there, there are options that are there. But, you know, I think people were like ready to get Zen out prior to the injury. But I don't know necessarily what the what the solution is. They had a week plus. They had the extra week with the open week, and that's what they what they got down to. So now they're going to have to go to the next option, whatever. And you know, on our chat and the post game show, there are people like, "Well, why don't you move Fryer from you know from right to left?" I'm like, "Well, because you're having to do everything backwards, and that's not yeah. necessarily as simple. It's not just like, well, well, you know, you're a cornerback, just play the other corner position. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't you don't you don't do that. So." Uh, Justin Fry is going to earn his money at this point because he's going to have to come up with something because there is a guy who wears number 11 for Penn State, Abdul Carter, who is a real beast. And, uh, you know, that's, I think, one of the biggest concerns out there is how Ohio State will be able to slow him down. Yeah, I mean, I think back to the 2005 Ohio State-Penn State game where I think it might have been Tom Bahali at that point coming off the edge and just eating... Troy Smith's lunch a couple times and you go back to 2016 and Isaiah Prince struggling at the tackle position. So this is something you've seen and Ohio State's going to have to figure it out. They, they've got to is if it's a, you know, whatever the combination is. You can't trade for somebody at this right, point. Yeah, yeah, that's you, not the, how it works. The transfer portal is closed. There is not a trade line, deadline in college football. So the, you know, you, you've got what you got. This is this is why there are all those zeros on your checks. Time to Time to figure it out. They did not figure it out on the ground on Saturday against Penn State. Quinshawn Judkins, 10 carries, 29 yards. Travion Henderson, 10 carries, 25 yards. Will Howard, 8 carries, 14 yards, including the three kneel downs at the end of the game. 31 carries, 64 yards, 2.1 yards per carry. That uh, I don't want to get too hot takey, but I suspect that will not get it done next weekend in Happy Valley. Unacceptable. It was unacceptable with what they did there, but I put some of the malpractice on on play play calling. There were a lot of times that it just felt like, well, we haven't tried this in a minute. Let's try going right up the gut again. And, you know, and they got stoned on some things. They tried to get it out to the edges a little bit, and then they got away from it. So... You know, I, I would be really curious for us to get to talk to Chip this week. Uh, you know, we won't find out until Monday night probably who we're, who we're going to get on Tuesday outside of Ryan Day and Will Howard. But uh, it just kind of felt like they got away from all the things that they were successful. And I understand when you lose personnel, when you lose a left tackle who was probably a first-team all, all Big Ten type of guy, Josh Simmons, that there are going to be some issues. But... If, I mean, if this completely just, you know, blows the wheels off your car, I mean, that's that doesn't bode well. And I think something that sort of ties in with the struggles in the run game and the fact that they you ran it 31 times out of 47 snaps. That's It's basically two-thirds of the time you're running the ball and you're getting 2.1 yards per carry on that. And I know you want to stay with the run, and I know Chip Kelly wants to stay with the run. They threw it 16 times and gained 221 yards. They ran it 31 times and gained 64 yards. So it's you, you went from they have yards per completion on the box score. So the 13 completions went for 17 yards per completion, and the rushes went for 2.1 yards per rush. It feels like you probably have a balance issue if you're able to do that much in the run in the pass and you're able to do nothing in the run. Having four targets for Jeremiah Smith feels... Criminal is probably a little bit strong, but also I'm not sure what other word to use. You Fel- have, you have felonious. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a type of criminal. They, you know, four four targets, four catches for Carnell Tate. Four targets, three catches for Jeremiah Smith. Four targets, three catches for Mecca Abuka. Why did why was there not more explore? You know, explore the studio space. You've got these guys. The run is very obviously not working. 
you got you to gotta do something. And they did, to their credit, when they needed to get down the field and score a touchdown. They did. And then, you know, after that, yeah, okay, you're trying to run the clock out. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could have, you know, you've seen Jeremiah Smith being used in the run game. You've seen them use Jeremiah Smith just sort of outside as an extension of the run game. Same for Cardinal Tate, who had a fantastic game. First career 100-yard game for him, four catches, 102 yards, a long touchdown. Jeremiah Smith, three catches, 70 yards, a long touchdown. It just felt like they, they didn't take advantage of the some of the skill and talent advantages that they have. They went into their 36-minute offense. I think that when they were like, well, none of this is working. Let's just try and, you know, let's just try and take it home. And, you know, I think after they took the lead in the fourth, retook the lead in the fourth, and the next offensive series, I mean, it was on the ground, on the ground, on the ground. Everybody in the building knew it was going to be on the ground. So there were a lot of times of where Ohio State wasn't exactly fooling anybody. Mm -hmm. But the best teams out there are going to run, and even when you expect them to run, they're still going to run successfully. So, you know, that is that is problematic. Um, you just got to wonder if, you know, I, I really wish I knew more about how practice went the last two weeks, if there was were indications that maybe the line was not going to hold up and that just there wasn't a whole lot of confidence in the run game at that point. But, you know, Chip's like, keep firing. We're going to, yeah. you know, we're going to keep going for it. But, yeah, kind of running out the clock as you put yeah they were they were certainly in a 36 minute offense it felt yeah. like so now the Buckeyes are on to Penn State and I don't know that there's a ton of optimism among the uh, Ohio State fan base right now there certainly was not in our post game chat on the in the chat on our post game show it's an interesting one and we didn't we didn't actually talk about this on the post game show but man Will Howard had an answer for the ages at the end of the uh, at the end of the press conference. He, of course, is a Pennsylvania native, and he uh, he said uh, he. Um, oh, sorry, gotta find that. I thought I had. I was going to say I, I could I've paraphrase got, it, but I don't. You yeah, got the quote. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the exact quote. I know I, I know I saw it here. Uh, he said, "Quote: They didn't think I was good enough. I guess we'll see next week if I was." That's uh, you know a Penn State native. He grew up a Penn State fan. Penn State passed on him. So now he's playing for Ohio State. Now he's going back to uh, going back home to Pennsylvania. That was just sort of the you know the end of this very long press conference, and there was a lot of negative you know negative questions and negative and and you know I get it. It was not a great game in a lot of ways, but man, now that Ohio State is through the Nebraska game, I know Ohio State fans are not necessarily excited, but man, that is potentially a very very big game not only for the Buckeyes but for Will Howard in particular. Absolutely, and you know, I think the big thing is we, we, we are recording this before the Penn State Wisconsin game, mm -hmm. so I, you know I can't necessarily speak on this, but I, I still see some issues with Penn State in terms of they don't have any receivers. Uh, Drew Allard's got his issues as as you know as a thrower and everything else, but I think we can all agree that Penn State is a defensive led team, and with Ohio State's offense being as anemic as it was in this game here on Saturday, that's where a lot of the concern comes in. But I'm really looking forward to see what a very motivated Will Howard looks like there. Uh, will there be a lot? Will, will there be more RPOs to where he can kind of call his own number? Because if you know if that defensive end crashes down and he can turn around and run it, I mean we saw we saw some elements of that. We talked about what his yardage was. I mean that's you know sack adjusted. I mean you know, he got hit a couple times, got brought down a couple times, but you know I think it's going to be a good game. The sun's going to come up on Sunday, and you know I think that we're going to we're going to see a good one in in State College if we can ever get in. Yeah, we'll we'll the, the traffic will be a whole separate. Maybe we'll do a show on the traffic uh, sometime later on in the week. But yes, we will be there next week for the Buckeyes and the Nittany Lions. What is going to be shaping up to be one of the biggest games in the Big Ten this season. We will be there. Assuming, assuming Penn State doesn't screw it up, it will be a top five matchup uh, against uh, the, between the Buckeyes and Nittany Lions Saturday in Happy Valley. We will be there for all that. There will be plenty to talk about all week long. I know you guys will have plenty to talk about all week long as well. We hope you're doing it with us at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That's where Tony, Kevin, and I cover the team. Mark covers recruiting. Got our whole team of X's and O's gurus there to make you a smarter football fan. All at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Also a very fun 
an active board on the Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby's Columbus. I have not looked at exactly how active the board is. I'm guessing it is very active right now. It tends to be, uh, tends to be an active place when, uh, when there's lots to talk about, as there is in moments like this. So that will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.